Hey guys, Kamikaze here with part three of the Kindred starter decks. This time we're going to go over Astral, named Chimchu Conflict. So just here on the Light Seekers page, you can see picture of the box, uh, talk a little bit about the hero, Star Tamer Kalak. His ability, just shuffle your hand back to your deck, draw that many cards, and then you can only use this once per, uh, per game. Really cool. He's superior in gravity, so you might see a lot of gravity cards, which when we get to the picture, I'll show you. 31 health, pretty okay. Uh, back to the ability. Um, I think there's only one hero in uh, Kindred that has, like, you can only use this ability once per game. So it's really cool to see Play Fusion really breaking the mold with the hero abilities. Things that you can only do once per game. So, like, you probably want to do it, like, specifically for this card, you probably want to build up a big hand, maybe like seven, eight, nine cards, and then use your ability throw it all back and then just get a brand new hand probably get something bigger really really cool uh they give a little bit of you know lore about kalak and then we have what they believe is the mvp and i, I really do think this is the mvp card of the deck which is chimchu commander we'll talk about him a little bit later and then this is the deck list this is all the cards you're going to get with chimchu conflict and this is the the entire deck so as per usual, every time I want to do one of these Kindred decks, I make little graphs showing you guys a little bit easier. If you're a new player, you don't understand what certain cards are. I just have the picture here so you guys can come along with me. Instead of going to the database and like alt-tabbing back and forth between the deck list and what cards are in there. And on the top right, I put a little cheat sheet showing how many cards of each element. And then because this is the Chimchu heavy deck, how many cards of Chimchu are here. And the the two copies of guard howler which we'll talk about later which is the the card that helps out the whole uh archetype so we already talked about kalak remember he's superior gravity so if we look at that superior gravity there's 11 gravity cards pretty good you probably get two gravity actions a turn if you want to go that way let's go into the extra uh the combos so solar lunar is tidal shift eight healing draw two Technically, it's draw three because you do draw again after uh, the combo's done. You do draw an additional card for playing a combo, so it's really good. Uh, for new players, super easy to understand. Get a solar, get a lunar, pop this if you need a you know, quick little healing, and then just really, really good card draw. And it's really good, too, if you draw three cards. Maybe next turn you want to use one of your action to use Kalak ability. You know, just shuffle your hand back to your deck, see what else you get. Um... The first three cost combo is Lunar Alignment, Lunar, Lunar Gravity. You're immune to damage for the three corners. It's up. Really, really cool card. Again, I like this for new players because say if they really, really flock to this card, they probably want to make a national deck and they're definitely going to include this and they're going to try to find a way to get the best maybe Lunar Hero. That way they could put a lot of Lunar actions in their deck or so. So I really like that. Um, the first... All three element is planetary alignment, 12 damage, really straightforward, simple, easy to understand. And then the second one is gravity bubble, eight damage to target, and then rotate all heroes buffs to their final corner and then restart your buffs. So for a multiplayer game, all heroes, so it's literally whatever your three, four, five, six enemies, are, uh, people you're playing with, because not enemies, all their buffs get rotated to the final corner and then you restart your buffs. For new players, it's a little confusing because there's a lot of... Um, like board manipulation that has to go around like some cards have to go to the final corner but like yours have to go back to the start so it's a little awkward but i love this card i think it's really cool i think it's one of the more unique um combos for astral outside of the ones that are in kindred because kindred kind of like break the mold of astral combo so it's really sick and then the final uh four cost one is gravity gravity solar lunar for black hole which is a rare I'm very surprised that they gave this in the starter deck, but I'm really happy they did because this card is really crazy. Nine damage and remove all buffs from the recipient. So if you're new to Light Seekers, most of the time, um, we could go to Pathfinder. So most of the time, uh, buff removal cards are kind of like Pathfinder where it's like remove one buff from the recipient. Um, Pathfinder is a little bit different because he does have the whole astral mechanic of your graveyard manipulation. So you increase it by one if you have uh, your last discarded card is Lunar. 
a lot of buff removal cards do have the keyword burn so once you use it you can't use it anymore so most of the time decks rarely run more than three unless like people sideboard which is like they have their side deck to put other buff removal so it's really cool that they put uh this huge aoe board clear in uh the big combo for the deck i really really enjoy that um for this video we're going to split it up a little bit differently because uh if you see i have on the left are all the chimcha cards and then on the right are all the other cards in the game or on the deck so i have guard howler which is like the chimchu helpful card so i'll go to every other card outside of the chimchu cards first and then i'll go uh i'll bring it back to them so first we have uh, for solar it's impatient scholar look at the top card of your deck and then you may choose to either discard it to draw two cards or put it back to deal four damage to your target it's a defend and i really astral has a lot of like defend cards that can deal damage which is pretty unique because there are some cards that forbid players from using attack actions this turn or like they penalize them for if they use an attack they take damage or such but impatient scholar is really cool um say if you you know look at the top card of your deck and it's a chimchu card and you really want that so you leave it on top you still deal four damage so you're still being proactive with the damage or you know if it's some kind of like i don't know card that you're really not going to use you just toss it out and you draw two more cards and again it works really well with the hero kalak you have two more cards in your hand now if you want you get kalak ability you're guaranteeing two cards back into your deck getting a new uh set of cards it's really cool uh, some plane charger at one so nothing nothing and the four damage to your target restart this if the last discarded card is gravity so you know pretty cool to constantly get damage and again you have 11 gravity cards in your deck so it's not that crazy to maybe restart this once or even twice a game so it's really really nice uh really easy to understand uh it does force new players to understand the uh the graveyard manipulation so and that's what they want um new players to understand when they're playing astral so for lunar we have dust feeder three healing and then it's increased by four if your last discarded card is solar again forcing new players to understand graveyard manipulation you want a bigger heal make sure you have the top card is solar yukona oracle just uh reduce damage nothing than three for the last three corners very straightforward Lunar Offering, nothing on the first three corners. And then the fourth corner, you have to use your Defend Ability to heal for 11. It's good uh, for new players. It does uh, for, like, intermediate level. When you play it on the board, uh, it kind of forces your opponent to either try to burst you down and kill you before this goes off. Or use Buff Removal to take this out. And having, like, Buff Removal fodder is really nice in Light Seekers. Because, again, there's... I want to say because i'm not really thinking about it real quick i want to say like three or four of the of the nate of the orders have burn in their uh buff removal card so once you take out that buff removal card it's not coming back it's really really nice onto gravity we already talked about pathfinder really good three of buff removal anti-gravity snail two damage draw a card face up that card's not gravity increase damage on by two two copies of it it's a little hard because you do have 11 gravity cards and we're not even in uh talking about the combos as well so it's a little bit more difficult to get this one off maybe you get it off four damage is really really nice though really cool and it does again introduce new players to the whole um if this card is x deal this if this card is y deal that or if this card is not x deal this uh spectral guide really really nice uh draw engine for uh astral in general it's nice that they gave a one copy of and then Zeppelin Scout, uh, it's a rare card. I think it's like one of the weaker cards out of all the starter decks that they that they have for the rares. You just look at the top six cards of any person's deck. And then afterwards, you can leave it there or you can shuffle the deck. It's it's cool. You could like peek into the future for either yours or your enemies, but it's, a, it's an okay card. All right, now we go on to... Oh, uh, we could just talk about the... The neutral cards umbron bark keep we talked about it in the last two videos just really nice card uh it works with kalak your hero you can draw two cards if your enemy's holding more cards than you then you get kalak so you get guaranteed two cards really nice and then battering ram uh 
clunky on all corners and that the start of your turn deal damage to your target if they have six or more cards in their hand. I like the flavor of this where it's like, you know, corner one, only a little bit. Then corner two gets bigger. Like the damage, you know, ramps up, up and up and up. So your opponent might, whatever, be okay with taking one damage turn one, two damage turn two, sure. Three damage turn three, maybe. And then five on turn four is, is kind of serious. So you're forcing them to maybe play cards that they don't want to play because they don't want to take this big amount of damage because hey what is it three six that's 11 damage for one card over four turns is not that bad so it's it's okay i don't think uh many decks might be running this outside of starter decks but we never know right light seekers has that beauty of every card has a multitude of playability so now we go on to the chimchus so for solar we have chimchu commander which is like the big star player of the deck so he's a buff first two corners do nothing and then corner three does three damage to your target and then you gain an additional action when you play a chimchu card really really sick card um again in light seekers you only have two actions so anything that gives you multiple actions is really sick so you can do crazy plays like whatever on the third corner of this you'll have your two actions you play the next card chimchu militant which does five damage and then you still have two more actions. So you can definitely do something crazy like, I don't know, drop any of these other Chimchus, then get another action, and then play another Chimchu and get another action. So if you play your cards right, you could probably get four or five actions a turn, which is really, really sick. A Chimchu Militant, just an attack, solar card, five damage, straightforward. Nothing too um, crazy to talk about. Uh, another uh, Kindred card. Uh, Telesta Protector. First corner is reduce damage received by four. And then corner two is healing by two. Uh, very straightforward card. You're probably going to want to use this with the Chimchu Commander because it just gives you another action so you could get the ball rolling to do other stuff. Chimchu Farseer. Cancel your target's next defend. When that happens, you heal for three. Really cool. It's the opposite of Exterior Defender for... Um, the mountain people that one cancels your opponent's next attack this one cancels their next defend and a lot of defends and light seekers are uh, healing kind of stuff so if you are going aggressive you know you you're doing the whole nuts with the chimchu commander multiple uh, actions your final action you could drop like chimchu farseer you gain another action then i don't know pass your turn draw a card or something now your opponent lost so much damage from you know all the attacks you did to them or whatever they can't really defend. Their first defend has to be something useless. You gain three healing from that. They waste an action, and then they have to maybe now use their healing. So their turn's over. They use both their actions, and now it's back to your turn. So it's a really, really nice card. Um, new players really like this. Higher level, it's really good. Say if you're getting down to the nitty-gritty, then you force your opponent to burn a card. No one wants to burn a card when you only have like a handful of cards in your deck. Uh, a new kindred card again is Telestin Priest. So it's a defendability, or it's a defend card. And then two healing, deal one damage to your target, draw a card. Very straightforward. Again, it works well with Commander. Commander does three damage. You play Telestin Priest. You heal for two, so it's a five point swing. Deal one damage to your enemy, six point swing. And you draw a card and get an additional action. Really, really crazy. Uh, Chimchu Infiltrator, it's a burn, 3 damage, attack. Uh, if your last discarded card is Lunar, move 1 discarded action card from your uh, to your hand. So, again, really, really sick. Plays with the Graveyard Manipulation twofold, because it is, if your last discarded card is Lunar, this effect will work. And you can get anything from your Graveyard back that's outside of burn. And combos, because it's discarded action. So it's really nice. And then the last card is... Guard Howler, two healing, draw card face up. So by face up, it means you literally show both yourself and your opponent. If it's a Chimchu, you gain an additional action. So it's really, really nice. Uh, works well with Commander, right? If you do have the ball rolling, it works well with Zeppelin Scout. Like if you definitely know that a Chimchu is on top, you can play Guard Howler, get a two healing, you get an additional action. Basically, you free cast it, Guard Howler. Really nice. So, and you do have 11 copies of Chim or 11 cards of Chimchu, so it's not out of, you know, 
Aaron Jesus to just, you know, try to top deck and pray, you have 11 chance, uh, 11 chances to get uh, a Chimchu. So overall, this is the deck. I think this deck is really good. I think this deck is super fun. Outside of like it being good or whatever, it's really fun. The whole uh, corner three Chimchu commander and then just Chimchu, 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 like all that kind of stuff is really like goofy. Especially like when I was playing with new players, uh, when they were getting this off, like it was kind of cool seeing like the gears tick in their head. They're like, oh shit, okay, wait, this one's a Chimchu as well. All right, I could play this and then this and then this. Oh, I still have one more action. All right, I'm just going to end my turn and draw. So it's really cool. Uh, I hope you guys did enjoy this. Be sure to um, get ready for your next video. Maybe I think I'm going to go into Mountain. And then after Mountain is going to be Tech. Yeah, I think that that's the order I'm going to do it. So, again, thank you for watching, guys, and take care.